everyone. Hope you're doing good. It's me, Chris Bennett, your blockchain beard guy. I wanted to talk to you a few minutes today about what's going on in the blockchain world. Uh, 2021 has really been an interesting year. Seems like every day you open up the news and there's a story there with uh, some kind of relation back to blockchain. Very, very different than how it was even just a short time ago. Um, and like I said, we've certainly seen a lot of change this year. Uh, we've seen Bitcoin get up over $60,000. And uh, as of very recently, it's reversed all of its gains for 2021. Um, we saw the explosion in NFTs and all of a sudden NFTs becoming a, a kind of everyday household term. Um, you know, prior to that, it was really only folks like us, folks in blockchain, uh, who had heard of non-fungible tokens or ERC-721s. Um, but maybe one of the biggest stories right now going on in the blockchain world, especially in the cryptocurrency or digital money space, uh, is one that isn't getting talked about nearly as much. And I can understand why. Um, there is some controversy surrounding it, number one. And then number two, it's just not quite as glamorous as uh, NFTs or skyrocketing crypto prices. Um, one of the topics that really interests me right now is central bank issued digital currencies. And we've seen a number of countries and regions in the world start to experiment with this. Um, China even recently went live with the digital yuan, a, a blockchain based version of their currency. Um, the United States is experimenting uh, with a digital dollar, the Federal Reserve is. Uh, the European Union has been experimenting uh, with the same thing. And I'll include some links below in the description so you can read some of these stories and see what's going on for yourself. Now you remember famously uh, Venezuela started this trend a few years back with the Petro, um, which was <clears throat> met with great fanfare and then didn't really go too far. And, uh, frankly, I think that has more to do with the fact that they didn't really think out a lot of the mechanics um, and the implementation was uh, very, very rushed. Um, but there's a good reason to believe that central bank issued digital currencies or CBIDCs are here to stay. Um, like I said, this is kind of controversial. Uh, some people see a lot of benefits in these central bank issued currencies. Uh, for example, the Bank of England did some research a few years back and what they found out is that if an economy was to issue a central bank issued digital currency and put that into circulation alongside traditional fiat currency, um, they would have two very precise levers of control for quantitative measures, quantitative easing, um, would give the government a lot more power to control things like inflation, unemployment, etc. Um, and interestingly, what the Central Bank of England found is that these effects were even more pronounced in developing economies than they were uh, in first world industrialized economies. Um, so potentially some great, great benefit for third world countries and countries in the developing world. Of course, the flip side to all this is anything that's on blockchain is stored on a permanent ledger. Uh, and a lot of privacy advocates are concerned with the idea that uh, you will be able to trace a digital dollar or yuan or whatever euro, whatever the currency is, um, through every single transaction it makes. And do we really want to live in a world where uh, anybody can go view anybody else's purchase history uh, for anything and everything going back uh, all the way to the, the beginning of their life? Um, so very, very controversial issues, um, and I, I think answers to these questions are still forthcoming. Um, but like I said, this is a very, very interesting story to watch because now all of a sudden you're seeing um, some of the world's biggest and largest economies really sitting up and taking notice and taking this technology seriously. Uh, whereas in pre-pandemic times, I think blockchain was something that was interesting um, at that level, but uh, no one really had any sense of urgency or immediacy. Um, I see that changing quite a lot, and CBIDCs are one of the areas where uh, we really see a lot of acceleration, uh, a lot of interest. So 
Um, be curious, what do you guys think? Leave something in the comments. Let me know. Uh, do you think these uh, central bank issued currencies are a good idea? Do you think they're a bad idea? Um, you know, how, do you, how do you feel about this uh, in comparison to the Bitcoin white paper, or Satoshi's white paper, um, you know, the original Bitcoin vision and the vision espoused by many Bitcoin and general cryptocurrency advocates is that we could have uh, workable digital money independent of a central bank. So um, are central banks still an institution that we need? Uh, if so, why? If not, um, what else is going to step in and fill that role? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, and of course, if you want to go deeper into any of this, uh, learn a little bit more about blockchain, be sure to check out the great classes we have at Blockchain Training Alliance. Um, <clears throat> whether you're technical or non-technical. Uh, if you want to get deeper into this world of blockchain, Web3, and decentralization, we have a good offering for you. So hope you guys are doing well. Um, again, let me know what you think in the comments. Really curious. Always love hearing your guys' feedback. Uh, gives me lots of new good ideas. Uh, if there's any good topics out there, any questions you have or anything like that, let us know. Uh, I'd love to do some videos on that. Uh, anyway, take care, guys. We'll chat soon. This is Chris Bennett blockchain beard guy.